of any design project is a site analysis. This essentially means putting together research and diagrams or even drawings related to the site itself and its surroundings, taking in environmental factors, constraints, opportunities and other details that's going to help you come up with a design strategy. The site analysis also helps you to draw up plans, sections and create views of your building to showcase how you've incorporated the site into the design. If you're an architecture student, make sure you're subscribed to the channel as I'll be posting videos throughout the academic year to help you thrive at university. In some projects, the site itself can become a huge driver and there really isn't another way to carry on your design project by ignoring the surroundings in site. Your first step might be to just find your site on Google Maps, but doing a desktop study will also involve researching the site deeply. If the history of that place has meaning to your project, chances are you can find out what once used to be at that site. It could also involve establishing the surroundings of your site and looking at what kinds of places are in the neighbourhood. To start, if you haven't already, choose a site. Most briefs might give you a generic location or neighbourhood and then you can physically find an empty site or choose a space to hypothetically build over and replace. It's a good idea to also have the street address or postcode which you should note down in your sketchbook to refer back to later on. Then open up Google Maps, find your site and use the walk around feature to get an idea of the surroundings. Look at it from all angles and all the satellite maps. You could even make a rough sketch if you wanted and basically just jot down some of the things that stick out to you. Now we're going to be using a bunch of different tools online to keep going with this desktop study. Digimap is an ordnance survey tool that has data on pretty much the whole world. There are several things that you can do with Digimap, such as downloading scaled plans and building heights, and it's going to be an important tool when creating sun path diagrams or location plans. Most universities, at least in the UK, will give students access to such OS maps, so make sure you take full advantage of this. If you don't have access to Digimap, check out the description for some alternatives instead. In Digimap, I would recommend downloading a PDF or DWG version of your site, scaled to somewhere between 1 to 500 and 1 to 2000, depending on how large your site is. Understanding the scale of this is super important so that you have a realistic view of this space rather than it just being a rectangle on your screen. Once you've downloaded these, you can import them into software such as Adobe Illustrator and clean them up. Sometimes you can turn off specific data via layers or manually erase as needed. I would just try to keep your maps as simple as possible with the only remaining information being road names. Unless your site is near a body of water or has a heritage building, you generally won't need more information than this. Now you can use this file as a basis for future diagrams, plan drawings, and any other places that you might need to highlight the site, such as in a technology report. Through Digimap, you can also download a 3D file of your site and import this into the software of your choice. This doesn't always work, so it can be a hit and miss, but definitely give it a try anyway. You can create all kinds of diagrams and portfolio pages once you have a base file to go from. The level of detail you add in each drawing is up to you, so think carefully about what you want the diagram or page to be about and keep it as clear as possible. Adding a key is something that architecture students often think about way too late, so make sure that the information on your maps or diagrams is legible. Planning documents are the unheard gem that they don't really tell you about in architecture school. This is a big advantage, especially if you're in the UK, but most countries should have something similar, so try and find out by doing a simple Google search. Planning documents in simple terms are the copies of plans, sections, drawing statements, and other documents that the architects have to submit to the council in order to get approved for planning permission and go ahead with the project. If you've looked at a house extension, you'll be aware of what this process involves. This is a great tool, especially if your site has some kind of history or if there's been any changes, as it will be on there, hopefully with any usable drawings that can be imported into CAD. The main difference between planning documents and Digimap is that sometimes sites will have gone through a lot of changes and the architects that were hired should ideally have submitted plans, sections and elevations, which you can use to gain information about the site, but also about surrounding buildings. Not only does this save you time from figuring out how the neighbouring building works, but it also gives you small details that you might not have known by just a visit. The way to find your site on a planning portal is simple. Figure out which borough the address lands in and Google that specific planning portal. Some addresses may count as boroughs that you didn't think of, so if you don't find the exact area, try another one. Ideally, having a address or postcode for your chosen site is key. I would keep this information on hand as it can be a good way of visualizing your project on Google Maps, for example, when you're discussing with your tutors. So once you've entered your address, 
you basically scroll through all of the results and figure out which ones are relevant and which ones aren't. Here I'm using an old project for the purposes of this example, but your site may not have the same level of information as I'm showing here. Sometimes there may be nothing for your chosen site, in which case you can try the neighboring buildings. Each one should have a documents tab where you can see a list of plans, sections, drawings, planning applications, design and access statements, and more. I would save these in a folder offline so that you can look back on them for reference or printing. A good form of output that involves the site is to create a sun path diagram. If you don't know what this is, it's basically a map of your site that shows the orientation of the sun, the building, and other opportunities and constraints. This allows you to get a better idea of how you want to design your building, how it will link back to the program, or even some of the constraints you might need to look out for. I've already got a sun path diagram video on my channel, which you can check out by clicking the link in the card. Ideally, there are certain things that you need to research about or look for when doing your site analysis. This does depend on the brief that you've been given and the direction that you're taking it in. For example, if you're focused on the heritage of the local community or the trades, then you might want to research a bit more into the history of that area and your selected site. Look at what was there 50 years ago and ask yourself, is there a way I can bring this back in a new way that adds to the present community? Or perhaps find a problem in the current area, such as a lack of communal spaces for the youth, and try and solve this in a way that can relate to your brief. Other things that you can look out for include the site area, so having a good list of dimensions or square feet that works for you. Building heights of surrounding buildings, again this is really good to have for other diagrams like sun paths or by figuring out what kind of accessibility is on site. neighbouring buildings. So this includes businesses, residential areas, nature that is across the site itself. Site access. So this is stuff like windows, doors that cannot be built in front of, for example. So you have to look at what kind of light certain parts of the building is already getting. Are there any future plans for the site? So again, you can use the planning portal for this to understand what the history of the site is. Is there something already being built or something planned for it? And can you create something better? Transport. So you're looking for transport links like roads, alleyways, buses, trains, and figuring out whether this site is accessible. Nature, so I already mentioned green spaces. Uh, you could also look at things like trees, slopes, anything that won't really show up on Digimap or Google Maps. How busy the site is. So this is stuff like footfall, how the site is used or has it changed over time, any vehicular move movements, are there trucks coming in, is there a busy road, is there traffic, etc. The weather or climate. This is fairly straightforward if your project is in the UK. And then the community profile. So this is stuff like popular ethnicity, social backgrounds, trades, ages. You can get kind of all this stuff from census data and through Digimap as well. Another good diagram for smaller sites is an opportunities and constraints diagram. This identifies the entry and exit points of your proposed building, which you should have an idea of if you've started initial massing. It also highlights transport access like train stations, bus stations and parking. You're essentially questioning how people would get to your building and whether or not this is easily accessible. Questions like these are especially important if your building serves the larger community and needs to accommodate a higher number of people daily. So let's talk about the physical visit. Now, if you're lucky enough to have adequate access to your site, then it will make it easier for you to revisit. But if not, then you will have to try and visit your site at least once and make it worthwhile. First, make sure that you take your camera or phone, a small sketchbook and a pen. These are just the basics. Then you wanna take pictures of your site in all kinds of angles and perspectives. It doesn't hurt to take as many as possible because you will be going and sorting through them anyway. These pictures are essentially going to be useful to capture the essence of the surrounding neighbourhood as well as your site. 
if you can come back after a few hours or at a completely different time of day, then that also works great. For example, a site near a farmer's market during the day will most likely be busier than at night when shops and businesses around it are closed. Light, climate, or even people can make a huge difference to your project and you might not know it at such an early stage. Ideally, you don't want to be spending weeks on end on your site analysis either. So once you have decided what your site is or you've been given your site, just mark a day that you're going to go out and explore and take people with you. Once you have found something that you want to focus on in your project, you can then go back for a second visit and look out for the things that you're interested in. Change your approach and perhaps sketch out something that you didn't see last time. Having more than one visit means that you can see things that you missed last time or even just compare how the site has changed since you were last there. A physical study allows you to create collages or have photographic evidence that supports your statements about the community or its cultural aspects. This is also a really good time to speak to local business owners or active residents to learn more about the area in general. This first-hand approach will show that you have an interest in the community and that you figure out what it may need architecturally. Whilst you're working on your site analysis, make sure you keep other ideas regarding your project in the back of your mind, such as the program, why you want to design this building and how all of these things relate back to your site or are inspired by it. In the coming weeks, I'm also going to be touching on portfolio layouts and organisation, why it's important to have a theme or a style from the beginning, as well as how you go about creating your pages as you work, rather than trying to compile it all towards the end. Having other forms of work such as models or even outputs like animation, paintings, 3D modelling can also be a great tool to feature in your site analysis. If you know you're going to be working predominantly with 3D modelling software, then it could be a good idea to start modelling your site from the beginning. I spent a week during my masters modelling a neighbouring listed church through building data and photographs so that I could include it in my final drawings and elevations and understand the relationship between my building and the church. Sometimes these tasks can take a while, but they're absolutely worth it for the final outcome, so I would definitely recommend doing so. Again, you don't need all of the things mentioned, so make sure you curate it to your interest with the project and try not to put everything you've ever learned about the site in your portfolio because it needs to be edited well. Don't limit yourself to the things I've suggested either. I hope that helps. If you'd like to see a video on something that you're struggling with in architecture school, just drop a comment below.